Okay, so I guess we can get started. Uh, let's first check the sound. If you can see and hear me well, please put plus in the chat box. Great. Okay, I see that people can see and hear me well. Uh, that's cool. Uh, if you have any uh, technical difficulties during the webinar, uh, the best way to solve them is just uh, leave the presentation and, en enter the uh, and then enter again, uh, because sometimes something can go wrong. So if you just re-enter the room, it'll be fine. Good. So uh, let's then um, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Alexandra. Uh, I am uh, a certified CELTA teacher and methodologist in Skying School of English. And today uh, we are going to discuss a topic which was highly requested uh, for a long time, uh, how to teach English to beginners. So. Um, we are going to uh, have uh, like a lecture for 50 minutes, but don't get lazy uh, because I'm going to ask you questions and you'll need to answer them. And then we'll have uh, the time for answering your questions. So if you have a question during the webinar, uh, it's a good idea to write it down and preferably in the special box above the presentation you can see uh, the box uh, Vaprosi where you can put all your questions. Because if you put them in the chat box, uh, unfortunately uh, I won't see them. Okay, so people are writing that there is no sound or video or anything. So I'll ask again, can anyone hear and see me now? Well, people say yes. Then for those who don't see me, please uh, just re-enter the room, okay? So for those who do not see or hear me, please re-enter the room. Okay, good. So, um, I guess then we can proceed. Uh, I'm sorry, I uh, won't be able to solve all your technical problems and sometimes it happens, especially uh, when if you were waiting for a long time for the webinar. That's why please just re-enter the room. Uh, so let's see what we are going to discuss today. Uh, we are going to uh, talk about um, who are beginners, what types of beginners they are, and uh, what are the challenges of working with them. Uh, we are going to discuss how to talk to, be to beginners uh, avoiding L1 from the very first lessons. Uh, we are going to see how to instruct them so that they understand us. Uh, and uh, also uh, we are going to see what to teach them and uh, what materials to use. Okay, so uh, let us start by thinking and I would like you to think for a moment and uh, just let me know what are your ideas. So who do we call beginners? Who are beginners? What can you say? Who are beginners? Okay, no knowledge, starters, just starting to learn a language, mm-hmm. Have never learned English before, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, some of them uh, don't even know the alphabet. Okay, newcomers. 
<laughs> right. So there are different ways to call them, but uh, let's make it clear uh, who who we call beginners in ELT. And actually, uh, yeah, beginners can say hello. That's a funny one. Yeah, probably they can. Some of them even cannot say that. Right. So usually, uh, beginners are those who. Um, have just started learning a language um, and uh, they might be familiar with some things in a language uh, they might not know anything they can even be illiterate in uh, Latin script in Roman script um, they might know a few words or not know even the alphabet so it depends uh, but anyways everything they might know is definitely not, not enough for a meaningful conversation. Uh, that's why, uh, depending on uh, what students know, what age they are, and what experiences they have in learning languages, uh, we can uh, look at different types of beginners. And we are going to look them now. So there are different types of beginners. And you can see uh, the names uh, of them on this slide now. Uh, and uh, the funny thing is, some people claim that there is no such thing as an absolute beginner, because thanks to a status of English as a world language or an international language or a lingua franca, um, uh, s like al almost uh, everyone know something in English so some people are familiar with uh, isolated lexical items that can be just words taken from English into their language like jeans or hot dog or president uh, that might be set phrases like made in China or like people, some people call it made in China. Uh, it, it can be even uh, whole sentences uh, from the films and pop culture like uh, you shall not pass or something like that. But um, sometimes uh, you can get into a situation when the only thing you share with your students in the classroom is the knowledge of Arabic numbers and that's it. So uh, that's why there are absolute beginners and uh, although it's a rare species it is not yet extinct and uh, the best way uh, to work with these people uh, is um, actually to use L1 so if you're lucky enough to know the language of your students uh, it will be much easier for you and for your students to provide them this easy start and uh, of course when teaching them um, use lots of visuals and realia and L1 uh, so everything uh, like this uh, there is another species more common and uh, uh, maybe most frequent, uh, false beginners. Uh, these are people who learned English before, or not English, any other language. Uh, they've learned uh, the language before, they remember something, maybe they know the alphabet, maybe they know how to say some stuff, but it's uh, not a lot of knowledge. They can be uh, maybe self-taught, uh, they can have some experience experience from school, from university, um, and so on. And uh, during the uh, lessons with these students, uh, they might experience something which is called uh, recognition syndrome. Uh, like while learning, they uh, recognize that they actually know it already, but they forgot it. So uh, halfway through an exercise, they might recognize the structure or the words, and uh, it uh, uh, can either help them uh, or it can uh, prevent them from learning. So we'll get into it a bit later. Another type of beginner is the beginner with or without second language learning experience. So what it means is that sometimes uh, we can have learners uh, who have already uh, st started another second language, so uh, any other language apart from English, and they are not uh, actually beginners in uh, uh, another language. Uh, 
Um, L1 is uh, their native language, language number one, the language you have learned uh, from your childhood. So that's L1, that's ELT terminology. Okay, uh, so, uh, well, when working with people uh, without a second language learning experience, it's actually easier to work with them because people with second language learning experience, uh, you can face some problems uh, because uh, some of these students um, might have different experience in learning a language. It can be positive and it can help you or it can be negative and it can actually uh, really prevent them from learning. Uh, another type is uh, adult beginner and this is uh, mainly something we're going to focus on today. Uh, these are people, uh, adult learners who came to your classroom being uh, not children anymore and they are learning the language. Usually they have a very specific goal and from the very first lesson it's a good idea to know that goal, to find out that goal and stick to it. Yeah, because uh, if you don't, they will lose their motivation really fast. Uh, so, uh, let's uh, look at one more, which is young beginners, or why else? Uh, these are just kids, and uh, today we are going to um, talk uh, mainly about adult learners and how to teach them, but a lot of uh, practices, a lot of techniques can be applicable to young learners as well. So if you teach young learners, you may uh, uh, pick up some ideas as well. So before we get into uh, the uh, specifics, I would like to ask you a question, another question. Uh, why is it difficult to work with beginners? So what are your ideas? Why is it difficult to work with beginner learners? Why is it so challenging? Why are we all here today? Any ideas? Don't have any base. Mm -hmm. Don't understand. Yeah. Millions wise is, is not that bad. <laughs> Hard to explain. Okay. No language of meta language. Uh huh. Okay. Cannot speak in well that's why they came to you because they cannot speak English and they want to learn. Speak Russian a lot. Okay. Great. Yeah, lots of ideas. Uh, I have the same. Uh, and if you have any questions, because, yeah, the chat is jumping very fast now, and I saw some question marks in there, so please put all your questions to a special box about the presentation, because we'll lose it. So, uh, let's look at uh, what I've got for why is it so challenging to teach beginners, and why is it so difficult to be a beginner learner. So first of all, uh, it is uh, it can be quite frustrating uh, to get so much information at once. So as mo many of you mentioned in the chat box, for them everything is new and lots of things are completely new and that's why it's extremely difficult for them uh, to actually learn. Uh, too many things at once. So not everyone can process that much information, especially uh, uh, in the adult uh, age, and that's why um, um, it is it might be quite frustrating for them because they cannot remember all the stuff at once and uh, they just uh, they may even um, think of giving up or something. The solution to this problem or to this difficulty is just avoid getting into too many details when explaining something. So uh, we'll see what to teach them a bit later during our uh, webinar, but actually uh, what your students need now is that base, but uh, you don't need to actually uh, teach them like all the details about something, just the base, uh, not too much. 
another uh, uh, problem is that they cannot understand anything and this is another thing that you've mentioned uh, so they cannot understand anything uh, because they don't know the language and well, that's the reason why they came to you uh, and uh, they uh, might um, seem to fail at understanding easy things and uh, things you are telling them. So the solution to this problem is, again, uh, keep it simple. Uh, simplify your instruction and your language uh, and also uh, simplify the things you teach them. So, uh, we'll get into more details later, but the recipe for this problem is just keep it simple. Um, also, another thing is that they might have different expectations and they might have different previous experience. These two points are quite related and uh, most of beginners, especially false beginners, uh, they uh, have strongly developed um, attitudes to the language and these attitudes might be either uh, positive uh, for example from I don't know a favorite book or uh, pop culture or something like that uh, or uh, they, ca uh, they can be extremely negative uh, like uh, for example uh, when they have uh, these uh, you know remnants of uh, previous unsuccessful uh, learning experience and these things can affect learning uh, very much so the solution to these uh, are first of all uh, make it clear what they need to learn and what they need English for uh, because this will help you to realize what to teach them and the other thing is uh, just uh, talk to your students and explain them what you do now and uh, why you do the way you do it. So don't uh, be afraid to talk to your students, especially if they are adults, and explain them why you are doing this dur uh, at the lesson and why is it important and how it can help them. So just uh, this will help them to um, this will help you to meet the expectations and that it will help them to understand actually your uh, methodology. Uh, some of the students um, can have low self a sense of self-esteem, uh, especially uh, adults. Uh, they uh, tend to think that they are not capable of learning a language at some age or because of their social status or because no one else in their family knows a language, which is completely uh, not true. Uh, and uh, anyone can learn a language. So solution to this is you will be uh, the person uh, who will actually encourage them, build their confidence and uh, like raise their self-esteem. This is another part of our job and uh, when working with beginners it's uh, very important. Uh, another thing is that sometimes uh, when learning a new language from the very beginning from ABCs uh, at an adult age can be uh, not only frustrating but people can feel infantilized so uh, the uh, solution to this problem is very simple just do not talk down to them they are not kids uh, they are not dumb they're just here to learn a new language and uh, you just need to um, again um, work with them in the right way and the last problem which is uh, not very frequent nowadays but it's still there especially if you work uh, with uh, refugees uh, or if you work in uh, uh, some uh, specific countries uh, people can be co uh, completely illiterate in Roman script well uh, all people uh, if you teach uh, um, like Russian learners they are uh, all illiterate in Roman script at some time but they can at least write some of the Latin letters because they had it at school or something like that sometimes you will have to work with people who have no idea where to start uh, when writing uh, some kind of letter and uh, this is something that should not be uh, neglected uh, 
at the very beginning because literacy is very important. If you do not teach that uh, at the very beginning, um, well, nothing good will um, come out of that. And uh, uh, when having my uh, CELTA course, uh, we had uh, one of the inputs in literacy and um, one day uh, the trainer, the um, uh, tutor just came into the uh, classroom and uh, gave us uh, pieces of paper with some script. Uh, I remember, I definitely remember Arabic, Japanese, Chinese and some other scripts from that. Um, and there were lots of languages, I guess like nine, which were not in um, a Roman script. And uh, she told us to copy it. Uh, just to copy it on a separate piece of paper and uh, she gave us a time limit for that so um, like maybe 95 percent of the people in our classroom could not do that uh, because all we did was uh, actually drawing we didn't know uh, at all what it meant what we were writing uh, we just tried to draw all that symbols and uh, they were completely meaningless for us uh, only one person in our group um, uh, was a bit quicker because he knew that when you write in Arabic you need to start not from left to right but from right to left and that made uh, things quicker for him. So uh, the point of this task was uh, that if you do not teach literacy uh, to your students who are illiterate in Roman script everything else is meaningless because they do not understand anything even if they copy the words they do not know that and how to teach literacy well I guess we all know that uh, we well practically and literally we have just to show them where to start when writing something okay so uh, then the main question of today how do we teach them uh, so let's see uh, what we should take into consideration when teaching beginners. Okay, so uh, we will look at the list of things we need to take into consideration when working with beginner learners and then uh, after that we'll look at some of these things in more detail. Uh, of course um, the first three things which I guess everyone wants to know how to work with are teacher talk instructions and the use of L1 or their native language. We'll get into that on a separate slide so do not worry. Uh, explanations. The only thing I would like to, talk, uh, to say about explanations is uh, we all need to avoid uh, too long and confusing explanations and we, we need to actually avoid um, explanations as they are uh, quite a lot. It is applicable to all levels but it is extremely important uh, during uh, lessons with beginners. Of course uh, when teaching beginners we will have to use uh, extreme amount of visuals, uh, flashcards, pictures, posters, uh, realia and so on. Everything they can see and touch and uh, um, like uh, look at it when uh, doing an exercise and so on. So that's really important. Another thing are drills and uh, we'll get into it a bit later. Um, and a uh, very important thing when teaching beginners are short activities and change of pace. Uh, adult beginners are just like kids. Uh, they get tired very quickly because everything is new for them. And that is why short, short activities and change of pace, change of activities uh, will help them stay alive during the lesson. And uh, when you uh, change uh, the activities from the very hard to something they can use to chill uh, out and so on, it will really help them uh, to survive a lesson. And one more thing is scaffolding. Uh, which means a full support at the beginning of the lesson uh, with then uh, gradual uh, removing of these layers of support during the lesson. So when teaching beginners uh, we first show them uh, things, we show them how to do them, uh, that we help them uh, to do that first, 
they try to do that and then by the end of the lesson they w they should be able uh, to uh, do that um, like to repeat w what we've learned on their own um, I'm explaining scaffolding right now actually uh, but if you're interested in more details on that it's a very um, familiar thing during uh, am among like ELT so if you are interested you can go here and uh, look at it in more detail okay so let's dive into uh, details as I promised and uh, we'll start with teacher talk so um, this is I guess the most important part and uh, uh, why is that? Every time we open our mouth uh, to say something in English to our beginners, we should think twice. Well, actually, we should think many, many times before we do anything. Any complicated language uh, will terrify them. And by complicated language, I mean, uh, well, you know, you might not think that this is very complicated but really anything above standard uh, will be really difficult for them so at the very beginning uh, of teaching them it might be a good idea uh, to use lots of gestures and miming instead of actual talking and in ELT it is called silent period so what it means is that during the first lessons uh, the teacher is silent, speaks uh, really uh, n not a lot of times uh, and uses only gestures and mimes to instruct students. Uh, from the point of view of students, the silent period means that they learn things but they do not talk much. It is important uh, when you teach, I mean like real beginners, because, uh, well, let us be um, um, honest, they won't talk from the very first lesson. I mean, talk fluently. It takes time. That's why uh, miming and using gestures will be your best friends uh, during the lessons with beginners. Uh, and of course, if you do talk, uh, after a so some period of time, uh, you can add to these gestures very simple words and instructions. Uh, like for example, uh, for the first, let us say, uh, 10 lessons, you can invite students into the room and show them to their seats using gestures. So you actually you just use your hands and you like let them come in and sit down and so on, but you you do not say anything. After some time you add some words and you use the same gestures at the same time and what happens is that after some, some time your students get used to the gestures and miming and they know exactly what they mean and what you want from them. So when you add uh, simple words and instructions to these gestures they automatically understand them so you use the gesture they know and you say something on top of that and they understand uh, what they need to do so gradually you remove gestures you leave only the instructions uh, in words so be silent if you can uh, do not uh, talk in these awkward pauses uh, when everyone is silent uh, let them time to think and do not uh, be afraid of being silent during the lesson and if you have never um, if you have never taught beginners before, if you're just starting, it's, it might be a good idea when getting ready for the lesson, actually write down everything you would say. So when you do that, uh, of course it takes time, but come on, we're learning to do that as well, right? So uh, what I did, I wrote everything down. So I had a lesson plan apart and then I have my, uh, had my copy book, I still have them and write them, uh, something in them. So uh, I wrote everything I would uh, tell them at different stages of the lesson. After that I reread what I wrote 
and I simplified it even more because when you write it down you think oh that that's okay that's a normal phrase everyone knows them no everyone so when you reread that you'll have a chance to revise it and correct it into even simpler things uh, and uh, when you start talking to them actually uh, try to keep your language simple but not unnatural uh, it is uh, very tempting to use um, broken English with your students uh, do not do that so if you started talking with them uh, just try and use uh, normal language but I mean simplified in the way of uh, vocabulary and grammar uh, okay do not uh, understand the idea of silent period uh, silent period is when you do not speak but you rather show people what to do in gestures and uh, mimes uh, and um, uh, if you uh, let me I was going to give an example from again the CELTA course so uh, once uh, and I think that you know uh, that if you were interested in taking the course uh, there is this input which is called um, a learning a foreign language and this is actually an input it's a surprise input when uh, a tutor comes into the classroom and uh, starts uh, talking to um, students uh, in a completely different language and that's actually a lesson in a foreign language so all trainees in the course are um, all the all trainees in the course are uh, the students in that part I'm sorry guys please can you put all the questions in our question box because I will lose them and I was trying to answer the question about silent period and uh, given the example about that but I've already lost that thing so it it's it's really distracting I'm sorry so just please if you have a question I'll explain everything so put it in the question box which is above because that's where I'll go to answer all the question the question box is above the presentation it's called Vaprose okay so uh, very quickly uh, if you're interested in the story I can tell it if not we can just proceed okay so I guess then we can move on to uh, giving and checking instructions so this is something that uh, is really connected um, it's really connected to um, uh, teacher talking time uh, and uh, uh, giving instruction to your beginner students can be quite frustrating not only to them but also to you because uh, well we all get uh, um, frustrated and nervous when people do not understand us and well we are there for them to understand us so there are very simple things you need to keep in mind when giving and checking instructions so first and foremost your instructions should be brief and actually this is a good rule for any level uh, and so when you do give an instruction uh, well uh, the longer your sentence is uh, well the more confusing uh, it is for your student so when you give instructions and there was a question what to do do you need to synchronize the instructions and the gestures of course you do first you gesture it without saying anything then you gesture it and you add the very very simple instruction actually a one word instruction like listen and you show uh, to your ear or read or look uh, or something else yeah it depends on what you need uh, from your student so one word instruction another thing stage your instructions separate them with pauses and stage them in the way uh, that when you work with different parts of the exercise uh, 
uh, when you work uh, with different parts of exercise and if the, your exercise have different steps in it, uh, what you need to do is actually break the steps, think what you need to do throughout the exercise and break your instructions into this small and every piece before actual doing of this thing. For example, uh, if uh, your instruction is, let us say, to read a text and then answer the questions after the text, so when you're getting ready for the lesson, what you do is uh, you start thinking what would be the stages of this task. So what you need to do here, first your students need to look at the questions, read through the questions, understand if they un if, uh, see if they understand them, then they read the text, after the text, they answer the questions. So make an instruction for every step and give these instructions before every stage. Like, look at the questions, pause. All students are looking at the questions, reading them. Now, read the, uh, the text, read or read the text, they all read, and only after them answer the questions. So. Um, a good part will be a good thing would be to teach your students basic classroom language from the very beginning and have it somewhere on a poster in your classroom for them to help and to use it all the time. Uh, again, another thing uh, use gestures and simplify your language. I've already mentioned that uh, and uh, demonstrate rather than explain. So, what I mean by uh, demonstrating is that give them the example of uh, completing the exercise and demonstrate them what to do instead of explaining them uh, very, in very long words what to do. So, uh, for example, you can demonstrate it yourself or you can do that with a stronger student in the classroom and if you have a group of students there, there is always um, um, the uh, uh, right student to do that and let's see how you can demonstrate the task um, let's try uh, to demonstrate uh, to see how to demonstrate a task where you need to complete the gaps so uh, let's uh, let's imagine that you have an exercise to check uh, the right uh, or con for control practice of the verb to be M is R and you need to complete the gaps in the sentences so uh, what you can do how you can demonstrate this thing uh, in, in several different things first of all if you are in a real classroom what you do first and always you chest the instruction so what you actually do you take your worksheet you show a sentence, you show where the gap is, and you show that here you need to put the right word. Uh, another option is if you, uh, of course you have a board, uh, you just um, draw a gap on the board and uh, then when you do this first sentence for them you write down the correct answer in the gap so they will understand what to do. If you work online in Skype, which I do, uh, you can use chat for that. Uh, you can use uh, whiteboards, online whiteboards for that. Uh, you can use Google Docs for that and many, many more things. So it depends on what your resources are. And you can also, hmm, <laughs> the gap. What it means is that, for example, you have a sentence, uh, Jerry a mouse and you need to put the right uh, a form of the verb to be in it. So what you actually do uh, using either of these uh, things that I've just told you, um, you say uh, Jerry, mm -hmm, a mouse, M is R your students think and hopefully they will tell you the right answer is you uh, say yes, very well, well done, is, and write it in there, in that gap. So this way they will know what to do. And of course check your instructions. Of course we cannot uh, ask uh, normal 
uh, full concept check question, uh, mean, uh, meaning instruction check questions at this point. But we can, uh, anyways, we can ask one word instruction check questions and we can answer in one word. Like, uh, if your instruction is to listen to an audio and answer the questions, you can um, uh, check it like this. Read, oh, read, listen, write if you if they do not need to write down the answers then if they do need to take notes then yes it depends on what you instructed them and prepare them beforehand instructions as well as all the things you need to say to them uh, is something uh, which is really good idea to prepare in advance so now uh, I've got an, uh, a task for you so please um, take part in this task. We are going to look at some instructions and see how to work with them uh, when teaching beginners. So uh, this is a task uh, where you need to simplify the instruction. Uh, for example, uh, when you check um, the words uh, and you show pictures of flashcards to your students and ask them to say what uh, do you think this is or something like that instead of using this long and uh, unnecessary complicated uh, phrase what do you think this is it's not uh, a, a good way to ask a question to a beginner you can just use uh, a simple question they all have in their books what is this? Or you can just do it silently. But what is this is a good idea. So let's practice and let's look at the first um, instruction. Now we are going to listen to the story and answer these questions here. So let's listen first and then answer them. Okay? What is wrong with this instruction? And uh, the task is put down in the chat box very briefly how can you make it better? It's too long, right? Okay. Listen, yeah, using the gestures as well. Okay. Right. Well, the first part would be they, they need to get familiar with the questions so they will look at the questions yeah listen and point to your ears that's a great thing yes and then um, answer the questions afterwards yeah and one thing to keep in mind okay and do you understand are not instruction check questions so, uh, by the way, someone asked uh, before what is broken English and uh, why not to use it. Broken English is, for example, when you say, listen this, it's broken English, because first of all we say listen to something, or we can just say listen, if we need to make it simpler. Okay, uh, let's go to number two. So first we'll read this text over here and then we'll answer the questions after the text. Do you understand how to make it beginner friendly? Read the text and answer the questions. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, if you work, uh, yeah, so first of all, uh, yeah, you can show the text. And instead of saying read that text and read this and, and so on, uh, you just show the text and say read. Uh, same thing with questions. You show them where the questions are on their worksheet and then they will try to answer them. Okay, and let's skip number three and go to number four here. What's wrong with this instruction? It's short enough. Glance over this text and answer the questions. So what's wrong here? Uh, 
Я Татьяна read with a gesture, and answer with a gesture. It's a good idea. Glance is too difficult. Right. So this is the way, uh, this is the example of uh, what we shouldn't do. So we need to simplify our language. Uh, and uh, Natalia, they don't even need to know the word scan or scheme. It's meta language and this is something that teachers should know. And at the beginner level, they shouldn't know the meta language. Uh, well, to tell you the truth, they shouldn't know it up to pre-intermediate. Right, so just look through the text if they know it. Again, look through, it's a phrasal verb and it's too difficult. You can just show them the text and say look or fast if they know that. Or you can just tell them the same thing, read and answer the questions. Okay, so um, I guess this is something you were all waiting for, to use or not to use L1. And this was the question which was asked millions of times and if up to uh, recently it was considered bad methodologically uh, to use L1 in an L2 classroom, now uh, the latest trend is if you're lucky to know your students L1 then use it, but do it, uh, well, not all the time, and just follow some rules when using it. So, uh, let's see uh, in what situations it is a good idea uh, to use uh, it in the classroom with beginners and even elementary students, and uh, when it's not. So, here on the slide you can see some ideas where people do use it at the, le at the lessons, and we're going to look what are the advantages and disadvantages of this. So, first of all, putting learners into groups or pairs or monitoring, I mean like uh, everything for classroom management. The advantages of using L1, of course, is that it makes everything quick. So, you do not spend too much time on that. Uh, the disadvantage, uh, well, you can often do this using L2, uh, using gesture and very simple language to separate them into groups or pairs. Uh, and um, what uh, can be done is actually just, if you have a group of students, just number them like 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, raise your hand. So put them in one group, two, raise your hand here in another group, so they sit here. So it can be easily done uh, with um, L2. But if it's uh, easier for you, then yes, at the very first stages, uh, a classroom management can be done through L1. But do not do that all the time, because if you don't even try L2, they will get used to it and even at the upper intermediate level they, they won't even try to understand you because they'll know that you'll just translate it to them. So, uh, Another thing, explaining a grammar point. Uh, of course the advantages is that it makes complex ideas easier for learners to understand and grammar is very often uh, quite complex. Uh, also, they can make uh, links to similarities or differences uh, in their own language and uh, they could feel freer to ask questions about the new topic and so on. Um, disadvantages is that uh, your students do not think in English and what it means is uh, when you uh, do that all the time in their L1 uh, they are not even trying to get the notion they're just trying uh, to find this uh, similarity in their language and translate everything and this is something that will further become their uh, block in speaking because they will try first uh, to find the right structure in their language and then translate it into English. So it's not uh, very good. Uh, another thing is that um, 
if you do it in L1, uh, you will be, I mean, uh, yeah, in L1, you will be uh, tempted to get into a long explanation or discussion, uh, which then might make the very simple topic confusing to them. And uh, uh, very often, uh, if the explanation is in L2 and if you uh, built uh, the work with grammar correctly at the lesson, uh, then your students w will not need uh, a long explanation at all. So let's, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, when explaining the very first meaning of present simple to your students uh, for habits and routines, um, your students, of course, uh, when they come to an actual explanation uh, in your books, in all uh, ELT books they have then, present simple is used for routines and habits and so on and so forth. So they can be quite overwhelmed by the words like routine and habit if they don't know them yet or or um, is used for and so on. So they can be um, really confused, they'll, uh, they'll ask you lots of questions and it'll take a lot of time from the lesson uh, for them to understand exactly what it means. So after the general MFP procedure, after all the CCQs asked, after the, all the presentation stage and all the guided discovery stage, what you can do is just explain them very shortly or not even explain but summarize very shortly in their L1 what this structure is used for. So it will make things much quicker for them to grasp and much easier for you uh, to explain and for them to understand. So just do that but uh, again gradually uh, you can transfer them into English and they will, uh, then will, they will start thinking in English they will benefit a lot from that. So given instructions, um, sorry I'll just answer this one uh, for children too. Uh, Agata, uh, children and teaching grammar is a completely different topic so what I'm talking about now is not always applicable to children because children are not taught grammar like the adults and this is a different topic Cambridge University uh, held a webinar on this topic yesterday so you can go to their website and watch the recording how to teach grammar to young learners that's a separate topic given instructions uh, of course uh, it's easier and quicker but no for this one use L2 uh, why? Well, first of all, uh, students, lots of them, the only English environment they can find is uh, in the uh, your classroom, in your classroom. So do not uh, like. Um, uh, they will just uh, hear English only there. Yeah, probably, and that's why uh, when uh, you use. L2 instructions from the very beginning when you cover all your walls and posters uh, with the uh, different instructions you use all the time uh, and different phrases for students and for teacher uh, it will really benefit them so please do not use L1 when given instructions maybe at the very beginning but not uh, afterwards uh, getting students to pay attention and listen uh, when teacher suddenly goes to L1 uh, uh, all your students understand it can be a shock tactic but again uh, getting students to pay attention and listen uh, there are other uh, things uh, to do that and in a, a book classroom management techniques you can find other ways to grab their attention here is the link to the book you can all go there, Some uh, I'm sure that you know it. So there you'll find more details. And when teaching vocabulary, uh, so to use L1 or not to use. Uh, use it when you do not have any other options. For example, uh, when you teach uh, a student uh, a word have breakfast, it's possible and it's easy to show it to demonstrate it on a picture. So uh, 
like I don't know a person eating something typical for breakfast and a picture of the clock with uh, morning hours on it uh, and so on so there is no need to understand to translate it they will understand it so everything that can be demonstrated and showed with a picture is fine but if you try to teach them some a structure which is difficult to show, uh, some abstract notion, it might be a good idea and a real time saver if you just translate it. It's okay to do that. Uh, for example, uh, when you teach the phrase lock the door, and this is a phrase from the beginner uh, level of the book uh, New English File, uh, cl lock the door to show the difference from close the door it will be quicker for you just to translate to uh, two of those phrases so uh, just keep in mind do everything uh, not without thinking it through beforehand now drills um, there are lots of ways to drill things and drills, uh, however old-fashioned and non-communicative they might uh, seem, this might be uh, almost the only way to work with your students and to work on different things. So first of all, you can uh, drill pronunciation, you can drill when teaching you vocabulary, when uh, teaching you grammar structures uh, for accuracy, you can uh, drill sentence stress and so on and so forth. There are different types of drilling. Uh, the most popular is when you work in a group, uh, a CIC drilling or choral individual choral. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, Cambridge videos, um, uh, it's uh, another uh, organization, so you can go to their website or you can go to their YouTube channel and find everything there. So, uh, let's see. Uh, let's look at some um, uh, drills which are not so frequent. So first of all is a back chaining drill. What is it? Is uh, This is something you can do when drilling a long structure when you need to drill. Um, there is no way to translate drill into Russian because there is no such term in Russian methodology. Drill, it's, you know, like something you can make holes with in your wall. So this is a drill. Uh, so back chaining is when you take a phrase and you start uh, and you start drilling it from the end. So, for example, if you want to drill the phrase, would you like a cup of tea with the right intonation and with the right sentence stress, you start with the, right, with the last word, coffee, and then you add... Uh, things to that. No, it's not Zubryoshka. There is no such term in English, in Russian at all. So substitution drill is another way uh, to work on accuracy. Uh, is when you take a phrase and then you substitute, uh, and then you substitute one word, and your students uh, then uh, uh, repeat not the whole sentence uh, the same. For example, I usually go to the supermarket on Friday. Students repeat, I usually go to the supermarket on Friday. Then this, the uh, teacher says the word always, and students say the same phrase, but they substitute the word usually into the word always, and so on. And you can uh, substitute the word Friday or substitute the word supermarket, uh, and so on, uh, or even the form. Uh, another thing is a vanishing dialogue. So after um, drilling on, or after just uh, working on a dialogue, uh, you can um, do something like this. If you uh, you can put your dialogue on the board, and then gradually wipe out a part of it. So you can wipe out one part, and they need to repeat everything. Uh, from before, uh, looking at not the full dialogue on the board, then you wipe out another part, and so on, till they have only a few words visible. If you work online, um, an easier, uh, an easier uh, task for you will be just to uh, wipe out things like that. I did it uh, in paint, and it took me like one minute. So it's very quick and efficient, and uh, they just continue drilling this thing uh, without some of the words, so they need to say the words on their own. Okay, uh, so 
Now we come to the question what to teach them. And of course I've got lots of questions for you but we ran out of time because I have so many things to share and that's why I'll just enumerate uh, some of the things. So very tempting answer to the question what to teach them first would be numbers on colors and days of the week and so on. However, is it really what your beginner students need, especially if we talk about adult learners? Uh, you know, it's very important to pr prioritize the language and see what, your, uh, what uh, exactly your students need. They need communication and communication comes first. Most of the time, this is what they want. So, uh, the first thing you would teach them, and this is what most of the uh, modern uh, course books offer, are things like uh, greetings, uh, useful phrases, uh, personalized language, things to talk about them. Uh, what uh, they need to learn, yeah, you can ask them th uh, that even before you start teaching them. Uh, different functional language about apologizing and asking for permission and asking for opinion and asking for help and so on. Classroom language, of course, goes under this category. Basic grammar, very, very basic grammar. They do not need to know everything, no details, no, not too many details, let us say. And the best way to introduce grammar at this point is situational PPP or situational presentation practice production model. What is that? Uh, okay, again, it's a separate topic on how to teach grammar. If you're interested, come to our website skyteach.ru or just Google it. So there's plenty of things on that topic. When you teach vocabulary, it's very important to teach them high-frequency vocabulary. Uh, so, actually, wor words they, they, uh, that are frequently used, or maybe some of the words they need uh, now, uh, now, and like here and now, and so on. And uh, you should recycle vocabulary uh, very regularly. Play different vocabulary games, play guessing games and so on because it will not only help them to remember the vocabulary but it will also help them to practice basic grammar structures when they play a guessing game, yeah? Is it a or is there and so on, all things like that. Uh, basic dialogue building, of course, uh, easy listening and uh, very short reading uh, passages. So easy listening and short reading passages uh, about reading. Uh, we've had a webinar on that and there are things that you can uh, take from there. So let us look at the materials you can use them. Uh, the easiest way to cho uh, is to choose a good course book and use it as the basis of your course. Why? Well, first of all, it will be easier for you to get ready for the lessons and it will be easier for them to track down their progress. Uh, the uh, course books have a ready-made curriculum, so you do not need to make it up yourself. Uh, it can be easily adapted by you. Um, it can be easily adapted uh, by uh, you uh, in any way according to your students needs it can be supplemented with different supplementary materials and so on most of them have the course book the workbook the teachers book the CDs videos and even online practice so um, it's up to you what to choose of course but I have four recommendations for you today uh, new English file of course uh, which is used uh, as the basis of uh, um, material uh, in our school. Uh, first of all, this book gives you an easy start. Uh, it has a new and improved edition uh, published not long ago. It has lots of videos uh, with uh, recordings from the street, even at the beginner level, and it's just a good book. It's a good solid book. A uh, new Hadway beginner is another way, is another thing. So uh, there is a new edition with online practice. Uh, we, I like it. Uh, I like these books because they have very funny stories. Like all the stories for listening and reading are, uh, well, practically jokes, not just stories. Face-to-face uh, -face starter. 
Well, first of all, uh, this is a very, very flexible book. It can be uh, used in any way. It is very easy to teach and it's the classics. This is what they use at CELTA course and if you are a beginner teacher to beginner students this is something you might uh, try out. It's really good. And my personal advice is check out the book Navigate A1 Beginner. Navigate is a brand new 2016 book. It was released in October 2016 so uh, it is exclusive for adult beginners. It is available as an ebook from the very beginning, and uh, it has online practice as well. Totally English, streamline, and lots more. I use them as well. Uh, I cannot uh, enumerate all of them. They are all good if you are an experienced teacher. Uh, you can also use supplementary materials and here uh, very uh, quickly I will tell you what you can use. Very easy and short listenings and I will share with you uh, only one link. Uh, this is something to begin with. This is a website that has lots of different podcasts but especially uh, I love this site because it has lots of materials for beginners. Uh, one more thing is a very short reading passages as I told you and for that purpose you can start with the Rong Chang website. Uh, jokes. You can use jokes at your lessons if that's your style. Uh, so check this site out if you'd like. And you can use and you would use a lot picture stories for reading and picture stories for speaking. So this is an idea of a picture story. You can use it not only uh, for a reading but also use it as a basis for speaking to tell the stories. Uh, and uh, authentic materials. If you would like to see what kind of authentic materials you can use with your beginner learners, please check out the recording of our previous uh, webinar, How to Teach Reading Effectively. And there uh, I uh, gave very specific examples on uh, what to use and how to use it, and the examples of the exercises. So please go there and see uh, what you can find there uh, which is useful for you. So uh, let's uh, sum up and uh, see um, actually how to learn to teach beginners. Um, if you uh, haven't taught beginners before and if you need to teach them now uh, or if you're going to or if you're planning to and so on uh, the best way to start will be uh, with this genius book uh, which you can see on the slide uh, which is called Pete, uh, Beginners by Peter Grundy and uh, as for me uh, this is just an available thing uh, because the author tells his own story of becoming uh, an English teacher for beginners and uh, he gives uh, um, he explains very difficult me methodology in very simple words so you can uh, uh, use it if you're not a very experienced teacher. He gives valuable tips and explains everything. Uh, it's fun to read so you will read it like um, just like you know um, something like uh, a good reading stuff before going to bed and he has uh, he gives out uh, lots of uh, ready-made worksheets and uh, things like that so please uh, try it out uh, and I guess that if you do teach beginners this would be not a bad investment for you another thing is of course learn practice repeat so uh, just go into the classroom, try out different techniques, uh, write down how it went, cross out the things that went wrong, try them in a different way, repeat and so on. Another part is uh, try and error style and this is how I um, learned to teach beginners uh, because I didn't know anything about beginners or teaching when I started teaching them uh, at the age of 19 and um, well actually what I did was uh, just Google everything uh, looking at uh, glimpses of uh, um, 
Yeah, it works. Uh, the, all the links works. It, it just needs some time. LR link is uh, open uh, in, on my computer right now. So please just try later. Uh, again, and uh, CPD, of course, continuing professional development events. Uh, visit webinars like this one, uh, workshops, conferences, online courses, read books, try the new techniques, um, observe your uh, teacher mates, and uh, you'll be fine. So. Uh, today we've covered uh, lots of things and uh, I hope that the webinar was useful and uh, first of all on uh, things that were interesting for everyone, how to work with L1, how to work with teacher talk and instructions and what to teach uh, uh, beginners and uh, what materials to use. Try and error exist as a phrase. Uh, and, uh, you know, however difficult it is to work with beginners at the beginning, um, you know, I like working with them because these are people who are highly motivated. Uh, they are actually extremely motivated. They have a very quick progress and uh, they learn things very quickly. And uh, everything is new for them like literally everything, not only the language itself, but also the methodology. So if you start teaching a beginner, it's a good start for them and for you as a teacher, because you will teach them uh, really everything you know. And it's really beneficial and it's really rewarding afterwards when they come to you and they share their success with you. So now, uh, if you all have uh, a bit of time, like uh, at least uh, maybe 10 minutes time, um, I guess I can uh, answer the questions we have, and we have lots of them. So uh, one thing I would like to uh, say uh, now is that um, in a few days you will all uh, see the recording of this webinar with the link to the presentation and the materials on our website skyteach.ru and if you are not uh, subscribed to our uh, blog please do that right now uh, because there you will find lots of interesting materials and uh, lots of interesting uh, stuff uh, all the links will be clickable and you will open them and see uh, for yourself and uh, let's just look what questions we have and very quickly I'll try to answer them. Uh, there will be no certificates. Um, Yes, uh, Maria, you are allowed to use L1 during teaching a beginner and I've talked to th about that uh, before. So uh, you, you will uh, find this um, slide uh, and you will find the link to the uh, details. Um, if there isn't any common language uh, to explain something, uh, and if you teach beginners, it's a question from Hannah. Uh, well, I had that experience. I've taught, uh, and I still teach, actually, uh, a student from Sweden, and uh, she speaks only Swedish. Uh, my only languages I speak uh, do not coincide with hers. That's why everything we did from the very, very beginning is uh, was just English. So we did it in, the, uh, in English from the very beginning, and we didn't use uh, a word in Russian. Uh, it takes time, it's very difficult, and I felt like uh, running a marathon after every lesson with her, but now she's an intermediate student, and she's a brilliant student, and she learned to think in English from the very beginning. So that's possible. Uh, another difficulty was that I taught her via Skype, so I couldn't jump around her and use uh, many gestures, but it is possible. It just takes time to practice and get used to. Uh, when we encourage students and when we talk about things like that, when we explain uh, why we do something like that, we do that in L1, of course. 
uh, gestures, Tatiana, are applicable in an online school. Uh, you just need a good camera and basic gestures can be used even in an online classroom. I teach online all the time. And uh, yeah, this is what I do. Uh, sorry guys, this link I've just clicked on it and it opened on my computer. So if it doesn't open on your computer, it's the problem of your browser. Try it in another browser, but it works. It's just, it was the question and I've just clicked Natalia on your link and it worked. Um, the name of the book with humor stories. <laughs> it's not uh, Humor Stories, it's a book, uh, Beginners, by Peter Grundy, and it's a book where he explains how to teach beginners and also shares some stories from his life which are happen to be funny. Here this is, and if you are interested, you can find it by this link. Okay. Uh, so let's see, uh, repeat the names of the textbooks. Uh, names of the textbooks are uh, New English File, Beginner, of course, uh, New Headway, Beginner, Face to Face, Starter, it's called Starter, not Beginner, and Navigate. So here they are, here they all are. Um, sp speak out is also good. I told you that uh, I've just uh, mentioned some of them, but they are all good. Okay, how about starting future webinars a little bit earlier? Well, that's not a methodology question, and not the question on our topic. Uh, what do you do with students who have too much questions? Well, uh, if your students have too many questions, uh, well, uh, you stick to the plan of your lesson, but you can satisfy only answering by answering some of the questions. If the question is relevant to the topic of the lesson, you answer it. If not, sorry. I guess they are all interested in the results. Okay, I see lots of comments in the question box for some reason. Okay, silent period. I was very quick about that, so for those who are still here, I'll just quickly uh, tell this story. Uh, what is silent period? Uh, as I already mentioned, it's when you do not speak, but you show. And uh, the uh, lesson in a um, language, uh, in a foreign language that we had on SALTA course, uh, it was a lesson of Turkish. And of course, none of us uh, knew anything in Turkish except for the word chai because it's taken from there, I guess. Uh, so uh, what the t our tutor do, uh, our tutor did is actually he uh, tried to teach us uh, basic things like my name is and what is your name. So after. What he did is, we all knew his name, of course, so he stood in front of the class and he pointed to himself and said, Billy, it was his name, he said, Billy, um, and then he added, uh, uh, my name is, in Turkish, to that, so it, it, it's, it will be like Ben Billy. Yeah, my name is, in Turkish, is Ben. So uh, what uh, he did then is actually he came uh, he came up to a student and he again pointed to himself and said Ben Billy and pointed to the student like silently asking the student to answer the question as well. Uh, of course, we uh, didn't get it at once, and we tried to say just our names, but then he repeated it as w again, and we started repeating Ben Billy around, or Ben Alex, and Ben uh, other names uh, around the classroom. After that, he taught us uh, the uh, phrase, what's your name, 
and then we all played introductory games you all know this game when you stand in a circle you throw a ball and you call uh, your name uh, and the person who catches the ball calls his name and so on and so forth a more complicated uh, or second stage of this task is when uh, you catch the ball you say your name and then you throw the ball and ask the question what is your name in the target language um, Ben is a short form in Turkish. Uh, so uh, what uh, what uh, the uh, tutor did is uh, he explained what to do in this introductory game without using any words at all. So he just asked us to stand up silently, form the circle, showed a ball, and demonstrate it. So it is. Um, actually uh, what you can do with your students in your language as well okay people if you know Turkish it's great for you but we all know that we can say my name is Alex or I am Alex in English as well and that's always and th that's also uh, true and if you open the beginner book there are two options so sorry if I was a very bad student in Turkish it was a long time ago so uh, the rest uh, of the questions, I guess, will be um, if you have questions uh, afterwards, uh, you can go to the uh, post uh, with the recording of our web webinar on skyteach.ru uh, and uh, ask your questions there under the post when it will appear. And it will, I guess, in two or three days. Uh, also, uh, if you have any other things and uh, uh, tips to share, you can do that as well on that post. And I hope it was useful for you. Um, um, it was asked uh, for so many times uh, to uh, conduct this webinar, so I'm really glad that I had a chance to help you at least in something. And this is only the beginning, so it's never easy. Just start and practice and you'll be great at it. So um, this is it. Uh, thank you for coming and I really appreciate that people from many countries uh, were here and I saw people from uh, Belarus, Russia, Ukraine and United States and even Japan. So thank you all and um, be creative with your teaching and try teaching beginners. They're really cool. So thank you and